the all new Mercedes S Class faces its first comparison here in Autogefühl against the Porsche Panamera Executive long wheelbase as the luxury sedan Focus. So, it is the most luxurious Mercedes against the most luxurious Porsche. This is very interesting because here, S500 AMG line versus 4S Executive for the Panamera means almost the same price, same entry price, almost the same length and almost the exact same horsepower. So they have a lot in common on paper actually, but at the same time they have a lot of differences and that's what we're going to talk about and which one will you take home at the end of the episode or want to take home and which one do I want to take home and I can promise you already so far the result will be very interesting and unexpected. Let's start here with the front, the all-new Mercedes S-Class. It has still the typical Mercedes star on top, whereas other models get rid of it. In the AMG line, you not only have this special front grille, but also these intakes here in the lower area. Well, fake intakes, we have to say, because this is closed, actually, but this is a sportier AMG graphic. So the S-Class in the AMG line is the least AMG look there is in the model lineup. We have a very dark brown here today, almost looks black with a little brown shade, also a little bit old school I would say, whereas the Porsche has a more round look definitely, the typical Porsche look in the dark blue. Interesting four dot LED signature right there, so already from the exterior the Porsche definitely with the sportier look, whereas the Mercedes still has this elegance in class. S-Class actually. <laughs> Interesting that both vehicles are available with long and short wheelbase. The long wheelbase S-Class is standard version in the US called V223, the internal code. 5 meters 29 the total length or 208 inches. Whereas the Panamera with the long wheelbase is at 5 meters 20 or 205 inches. So that means that this S-Class is nine centimeters or three inches longer than the Panamera Executive. And the wheelbase difference, 11 centimeters or four inches. So the S-Class then still a little bit longer. Whereas when you take the, the Executive version of the Panamera versus the short wheelbase S-Class, the Panamera is even a little bit longer. We'll see how it plays out in the interior, but indeed this length difference shows that they are indeed comparable as for the length. 21 inch wheels here for the Porsche, a little bit bigger, and 20 inch wheels for the Mercedes, but of course you can go for different wheel sizes depending on the wheels you pick. Interesting is that definitely the Porsche has the more, let's say, fluent form in this raindrop design, strong shoulders, whereas the S-Class more goes with a classic sedan look. That's of course the biggest, most obvious difference here on the exterior. By the way, rear axle steering available for both, but here in the Mercedes, it goes way further in the degree angle, so that's a little bit more sophisticated and really helps in maneuvering in narrow situations and turning circle. Impressive. In the rear, the new S-Class has these split tail lamps here and more horizontally drawn like this. And this is a new Mercedes rear here for, I mean, the E-Class, the CLA, the C-Class, they all look kind of alike now. And in the lower end here, <whistles> outer fuel fake exhaust alert, it goes through, but the outer tip is pure fake and the AMG line here has this diffuser style in the rear. And with the Panamera, you can see here, once again, this more round Porsche shape. The light goes all the way through like this. So to me, a little bit more spectacular and also more spectacular as for the exhaust. And these are indeed real exhaust tips. One, two, three, four, five. And do I else? Five? Oh, one, two, three, four. <laughs> yeah, maybe it's, um, I don't know. Did I lose my counting capabilities? It's four, of course. So in these versions, both vehicles just start below 120,000 euros or dollars, but you can easily pop it up with extras like 50, 60k extra or something. Yeah, that gets really hefty. Engine-wise, here with the S-Class, we have two comparable versions. 430 horsepower plus some electric mild hybrid boost here from a 3-liter inline six-cylinder. 
all-wheel drive, we will bias. This is the S500. Whereas with the Porsche Panera, the 4S, and they have a 2.9 liter V6 bi-turbo, which produces 440 horsepower. And the interesting thing is, you know, also all-wheel drive, we will bias, but acceleration-wise, the Porsche is at 4.2 seconds, whereas the Mercedes is at 4.9 seconds. So almost a second difference, although kind of same specs, even the weight does not differ that much. Yeah, probably it's the Porsche dual clutch transmission, which just makes it faster. And also this engine is just revving higher. Start with the interiors, car key here, pretty heavy and also reflecting, quite interesting. And when you open it here, you can see the door handles fold out. They say it's for aerodynamics. It is for aerodynamics in a way, but also for design. Hmm. But in a way, you know, um, and also when here, you know, when I close it now, yeah, that's okay. So that's, it is a protection, it doesn't hurt. But yeah, I think it's kind of strange a little bit. And door closing sound. Sounds solid. And here there has also the famous soft close option. There we go. Then interior of the S-Class in this new generation. It's BP because of the lights with the auto lights gone. So this quilting structure here on the inside and here we have a matte wood surface. That's actually quite cool. But here, this is my biggest criticism point on the inside of the doors. Before it was moving, you know, you had these parts of the seat and then they were moving, but now there's no feedback, you know, you just, it's like a touch button and everyone asks, you know, why? It's like, ah, I think that's just cost saving. Then the interior here in the bright style today, this looks super fancy. It's the AMG line interior. That means you have the AMG line steering wheel with the two spokes there. And this looks definitely sportlier than the normal steering wheels. So styling wise, this steering wheel way to go. And also slim and thick grab, so great in sporty driving, but capacitive buttons here. And they are very often very annoying indeed. Then a comfort focus here of from the s class from the seating you see this you know it's like a like mo like you know melting lava or something um, how it flows through interesting and again with the quilting structure the soft pillow right here this is really cool and you can also get a full fabric interior if you like but you have to specifically ask for it and they do not offer a high grade leather red interior so not sustainable at all and not in the price list let's get inside and there you feel that the s-class is definitely set on all the way you know on the comfort so a super soft and comfortable seating position that's actually pretty cool and wow these soft cushions here they are just amazing um, that's really cool so this is the focus of the s-class and you also sit relatively upright interior overview super impressive with the all new s-class you have this you know yard atmosphere matte wood that's really cool nice ambient lighting you'll also see it later in the tunnel you can change the colors and so on prominent air vents right there big head-up display two different sizes available well let's say one normal and one with augmented reality function then big digital instruments 12.3 inch and here this vertical screen in 12.8 inch it's also standard and it's just like really straight. It's not leaned towards the driver or something. Soon more deals to that, but everything wire touch or then these capacitive buttons. And it begins here, for example, with the driving modes. You have them to click it, but you see here, this again, one button, this, you see here, hold it, hold the whole thing moves. Also here, why would they do that in a car that's almost like with extras 200K? I don't get it. And then, uh, yeah. And then you can also click it here in the um, in the touchscreen. This is then for the drive mode selection, for example. And let's move on over to the steering wheel because I have a similar problem here. It looks really fancy, but then, for example, let's say I want to reset the trip meter. You know, um, I click here and then I click again. It, it gives me some kind of feedback, but then you hear how the how the button is reacting. Click, 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 but it doesn't move. So I do the right command, I swipe left with my thumb, but it does now it worked. Like after seven or eight times. Now again, the, the, now with the second time. And this drives you nuts while driving. Why would they do that? I don't get it, they have to move back. But 
I had some you know background talks and they said yes we did get the feedback and we will think about it and maybe they will move back on this issue at the later stage this will be very interesting to see soon more t uh, the screen details up close let me finish here the middle part so we can slide this one open a lot of high gloss panel use here and then adaptive cup holders but they are actually yeah, they're actually quite large then inductive charging pads this is you know microfiber tower you always need because this screen gets fingerprints all over the place definitely and then oh i think i increased the <laughs> vent volume you see here the uh, styling also changed in the middle instruments when i changed the styling of the you know of the digital instruments here on the left then also the styling changes here that's very, very interesting and then we have this split opening of the middle console now you can have your audio fuel then that's for example or another inductive charging pad and USB-C chargers. The digital instruments, quite fancy, and as I mentioned, you can change the stylings. It's really impressive. For example, to this one here, it's not flickering in real life, by the way. And the sports gauge, for example, here, with the red accentuation. And, for example, understate is also possible. And it's really interesting that, once again, as I said, here, map all over the place is also possible. That's very helpful. And, again, the middle infotainment also changes accordingly. Head-up display is quite large, also larger than it appears here on the camera and also has an augmented reality function where you see these arrows. And now some more details of the multimedia system here and MIUX. Here the temperature control as touch and it's just too complicated while driving unless you're a friend of voice control. Hey Mercedes. How can I help? I'm cold. I'm increasing the temperature to 17.5 degrees. Thank you, that's very kind of you. Sometimes she does respond to that, yeah. But not today. <laughs> yeah, but I think it could be made easier. This is then the main menu. It either looks like this where I touch, or if you click it twice, then you all can, also can go back to that. Um, this is always a go back button. Um, hmm. Yeah, I'm not so sure about that. So here the GPS, kind of responsive, like this, and then you can always recenter it like this. There we go. And car settings is also interesting. Yeah, yeah, here we go. So for example, here we can change the ambient lighting. Yeah, but why do we have to click edit settings? And here we can then also pick different colors as for well. that. That looks really impressive at night definitely really really cool so that's also where the s-class is definitely leading and also the massage function very elaborated that really goes through the whole seat the sunroof here is also the slider again not really practical it does not work with the mux in this vehicle here strangely it does work with other mercedes vehicles and here we can also completely open it you have to slide it twice then for that and it's actually quite large opening and again another split opening and also for the rear it's also there now to the rear, let's take a look. This also looks pretty luxurious. Interesting is that the wheelbase of the S-Class here in the long wheelbase or US standard version is 11 centimeters or four inches longer than in the Panamera Executive. So slightly more wheelbase and we'll also see how it really affects then the seating position here in the rear. Once again with this bright styling it looks really amazing. Oh, Thomas B has a butterfly sitting on his thumb while he's filming. Um, that looks amazing. Oh, there it's flying away. <laughs> Interesting. So uh, you have more like a lying backward position, but you can also adjust it right here once again at the inset of the doors. If you want it, for example, a little bit more upright, or you can also put the seating area here a little bit more forward, for example. And you see here, plenty of space even if I would be driving so this is really an executive feeling the split panoramic roof and when I move to the side and yeah there you also see my sh my shoes weren't particularly dirty but this is also a problem then with the bright floor mats they look amazing <sighs> yeah but it's cleaning job all over the place definitely and then here on the inside you have the middle console with a lot of charging possibilities even HDMI and this is then you know the climate unit which is like you know illuminated when you turn on the ignition but then it's just one button and this one button philosophy i don't really get it what is this supposed to mean i mean why why did they do that then here on the 
right side seat, on the being chauffeured seat. Here I just have to click one button and then the front seat here, the co-driver seat is going all the way to the front and I have even more space. It takes a while, but then it also has this footrest here, for example. So let's see, yeah, then it goes even further up. This always looks super interesting and here you can also see live on tape how long it takes. <laughs> yeah, that's some interesting piece of machinery and I mean, there again, you know, with my feet, I'm really afraid of, you know, we can clean afterwards, but you can see here with 1 meters 86 or 6 foot 1, it does exactly fit, but you know, it's it's close. It's definitely close. So I can like you know, push my feet all the way out. So the ideal would be like when you were like 180 or 6 foot or 5 foot 9, then it's the ideal um, sleeping position here. And yeah, I think in this respect here, the S class is also leading in this, you know, luxury aspect and well, the cushions are once again great. Here in the middle part, by the way, you have another area with this pad for the uh, rear entertainment system. You can also turn it on there. You can see it there, it turns on. And then you can basically do the same things in the rear, which you can also do in the front. And here we have some you know, cubby space with USB-C chargers and last but not least here reaching through the trunk. This is where in the Maybach version would then be the champagne cooler. Now the trunk comparison. In the S-Class, the interior is so shining, screaming out, so many fancy features, but I always say, don't pay so much attention to things that just are for show, but make the simple things shine. So for example, buttons, mechanisms, that they actually transport a kind of, you know, emotion and premium feeling. And the thing is here, interior is super shiny, but here, when you open the trunk, did you hear that sound? And that sound? And, and now, you know, these old buttons here, and then, listen to that. So, it, that is rather cheap, you know? It's one of the most expensive vehicles on the market, and that's kind of cheap mechanisms, interesting. Here, 550 liters, so 50 liters more than with the Panamera. You can see here, easily fits in with a cabin trolley. So this is more than a meter or 40 inches in length. Actually here is like 46 inches or almost 120 in meters. And the width here, this is actually less than a meter or 40 inches in, the, in, the, you know, in this area. And the height here, this is at 23 inches or 60 centimeters. And really different now with the Panamera because this one has this fastback styling, so the hatch opens all the way. This is so much more practical to load things in and out. And the length here is a little bit shorter at 100, 1 meters 4 or 41 inches. So this is a little bit shorter. This is also why it loses the leader. And here also a little bit more shallow. So these 23 inches from the Mercedes S-Class are not being reached. It's more like here 19 inches or you know less than 50 centimeters so a little bit limited in height and length but easier to get things in and out actually. Porsche Kaki more plastic so that's less premium but again it feels good and it's also slim. Then door closing sound very solid and the door closing soft soft close here is also available then everything wrapped tightly that's the design scheme and it's over a little bit more simple. I like this illuminated Panamera 4S entry batch in the lower area right there. So the S-Class is more playful, whereas the Porsche Panamera is more form follows function. It's a brown interior here, sadly no animal skin alternative available either. And the steering wheel is way slimmer and sportier oriented and the drive mode selector is directly at the steering wheel. That's what I really prefer. Seating position is way lower and also the seats are way stiffer. They're not that soft. And also the seat ergonomics, I think here in the Panamera is way worse. And the thing is, they could have made that better. Yes, it does have a sportier focus, but I think the seat ergonomics are really a problem. When you're in a Cayenne, for example, sit more upright, that's really comfortable. I think that's one of the main problems here of the Panamera. It might not affect everyone, but I think the seats itself, they're not that comfortable. Interior overview here of the Panamera. Interesting that when we have the engine running, you really hear it, whereas in the S-Class, the engine is so silent when stationary, you don't hear it at all. Then this, you know, wrapped tightly designed here, and lock lock that's cool. Definitely a sportier setup for the interior, and also a little bit easier. You have this central 12.3 inch touchscreen, and that's basically it. You do the most things here, and you still have a manual climate control. That's, to me, really important. 
have that also with nice clicking sounds and so on. So that's more driver focused overall and just simply are to control. And also on the steering wheel, the controls are really still with normal buttons and these, you know, these jog wheels for the instruments and here especially for the driving modes. Yay, and <laughs> that's really important. So easier user interface. It's not as fancy as in the S-Class, but you know, when things develop or evolved, not necessary, are they always better? And then here in the lower area, we have cup holders right there. And the opening here for the armrest is, I mean, who came up with that? It's like so unpractical. Um, and then you have like inductive charging pad here and also smartphone connection, but hardly any space left. Instrument, they hardly fit here on one shot. And uh, the middle part is analog and still the classic deal. Here, left and right, you can then adjust your overall drive distribution, for example, what you want to see. There's also a map possible. For the head-up display, it's not as sophisticated as in the S-Class, but you can, for example, also change different modes, Sport Chrono, Compact, or User-Defined, so you can also define what's being shown there. When the infotainment system here was introduced with the Panamera, we thought like, ah, that's really complicated, you know, and not that intuitive. It's fast enough, though, so the CPU is actually quite good. This is a nice overview and I also change the sports mode here, for example, and you can see how the different parameters change. But then again, my point is, meanwhile, when this is old and in the s the infotainment system is new, this here is the easier to control infotainment system because it's more straightforward. And yeah, who would have thought that? Rear seating here in the executive long wheelbase version, you have definitely more space than in the normal version. You can see also this executive entry batch right there and that's why it's also the reason you can compare this version to the S-Class whereas the short wheelbase would rather work with the AMG four-door or the CLS or something and here you can see a lot of space here also left a little bit more we have in the S-Class um, this can be yeah maybe then in the S-Class short wheelbase it's a little bit less with the S-Class but still somewhat comparable you have enough space also when tall people are driving and you also have more like the leaning backward position. Um, you can also adjust it here. Here, for example, the front part, you can make it longer or shorter. Or here also the angle of the back seat. So this can also be adjusted. Overall, also a stiffer, sportier feeling, single seat setup. And you also have a panoramic roof right here. You have, yeah, headroom gets quite close, but it does also work again with my size. And this is also, let's say, really built in this super split way you can see it right here and you have another climate unit in the middle part you don't have this executive seat on the other side where you can push the seat all the way well you can push it all the way to the front but there's no footrest or something so let's say the um the focus is not that much chauffeur like <laughs> so i uh, need some more work also to switch the seat right here and then in the middle part there's this one here and you can fold up some tables like this so yeah maybe then for work for a laptop or yeah, for food mm, yeah theoretically but of course you have to pay attention you don't damage things at least when you have brown dirt here <laughs> under your shoes then it really mixes very well with the floor mats Welcome to Thomas's Comparison Driving Lounge and here with the all-new S-Class S500 we go to the sports mode, a little bit complicated to pick it while driving and we go from 40 kilometers an hour to whatever, let's see, let's go! That's 200 kilometers an hour, 125 miles an hour. And wow, extremely silent here at high speed. That is a noise level that other cars would have at half the speed. Incredible, still quite stable in the sports mode. The air suspension is also a little bit stiffer. So I have more control. And the rear axle steering is going in the rear axle in a parallel direction in the front wheels to give more stability. And here also when we do lane change at higher speeds, it doesn't shake up too much. Still, the typical um, flying S-Class feeling is still present. 
Now, hard on the brakes, you feel the weight of the car and definitely feel it's not sitting too low. Everything's stressed on comfort. And here at the normal speeds, let's take it that way, 80 kilometers an hour, like 50 miles an hour, this feels like nothing. Going back to the comfort mode here, you don't have to press on the screen. You can use the lower control mechanism right here. And whew, so silent here. This is really amazing. And hey, Mercedes. Hey, Mercedes. How can I help? Start the wave massage. I'm starting the wave massage for you. Thank you, Mercedes. Ah. <sighs> You're welcome. Whoa, <laughs> didn't expect that. Thank you again. Interesting. That was that was very well programmed here in the tunnel. You can see the ambient lighting, which is really top of the segment. There is one vehicle that is even better than this one here. It's the Mercedes EQS, the electric S-Class, so to speak. And you will find a full review of that on Auto Fuel soon when we launch this video and when you watch this video here just a couple of days later then it's already online and you can check out the EQS full driving review here on Auto Fuel. This looks so amazing and of course I picked the Thomas Blue color right here. So this engine here, the in this case inline six cylinder, is doing a fairly good job. It's not the most emotional engine so Let's say the BMW inline six cylinder, for example, feels way more emotional. And I'm really looking forward to the comparison of the Porsche. Probably for reasons of the automatic gearbox, because the weight to the executive version is not too much different here, S Class versus Panamera Executive. But here the you know, shifting technology is different. Porsche uses PDK, the dual clutch transmission. So here, 4.9 seconds is the acceleration figure. And here, by the way, really in the comfort mode, going out of the course. There you feel the heaviness of the vehicle and that the suspension is not set on the sportiest note, but that's not the emphasis of this car. And clearly this becomes really you know, obvious in this driving part. So many technology and luxury features like this great wave massage. I'm still enjoying while reviewing. Here we have the traffic light view. So when the traffic light would not be visible in a very good way, I can check it here on the screen and then I can see the traffic light and also have augmented reality um, arrows on the screen here when I have a rule set. The same is also possible with the head-up display if you go for this second stage of this head-up display. The steering here, by the way, steering wheel in the AMG line has uh, talked to you earlier, this two-spoke design and while driving that just feels really sporty. That's cool. So I love the form of the steering wheel, but then again, the capacitive buttons. Why are they doing that? And I, I, I did have some more in-depth talks about that with Mercedes representatives. And they said it is not about coast cutting. It's about design and function. And okay, if it's not about, if it's about coast cutting, I could still understand it somehow. But design? No, it looks cheap. Functionality? No. What the hell? So, yeah, I don't understand that. But <laughs> coming back to the ride of the S-Class, it's such a phenomenal ride once again. It's so comfortable. The suspension is really flying up there on the road. It's just an awesome experience, really. In the sport mode, it does get a little bit sportier, but the sport in it itself can probably only be reached by the true AMG version here of the S-Class. Uh, not necessarily the AMG line. The true AMG version of an S-Class, if you watch this video at launch, will be available later on and we'll also keep you updated of that in our channel. Assistant systems work really flawlessly here. The most elaborated one, keeping a distance to the car in front of me. There's also the sign, like, you know, an indication in the head-up display in front of the driving car, but that's actually useless. But the true a well, really important thing is it's basically driving for itself you're supposed to keep your hands on the steering wheel at all times it's level two level three autonomous driving will be possible both for the s-class and also for the mercedes eqs we will soon show you a showcase of that as well it's very interesting then you can 
actually take your hands off the steering wheel, but here still meant to be kept your hands on, but see how smooth actually the car follows everything. And then let's have one more acceleration in the sports mode from 90 kilometers now when we're already at speed. One fifty. One eighty. And up to hundred kilometers now once again. Sports one again giving me a little bit more feedback. And here in the high speed corner, lane change. Yeah, you feel the weight of the car indeed. Interesting that it has the feature here that it pumps up the outside bolsters of the seats each. So when I do a right turn, it pumps up the left bolsters to keep me better in the seat. Of course, you're also on the animal skin surface, you slide around a little bit more. And once again, the noise insulation of this vehicle is just phenomenal. That's really amazing. And wow, such effortless driving at higher speeds here with the S-Class. That's something about it. It has, yeah, probably the best noise insulation overall on the market. And one of the reasons is that they already apply dampening material to the raw chassis. And that's a very interesting technology. And then kind of like evolves, you know, already uh, doing the raw chassis and painting process and so on. So, yeah, <laughs> the side effect is that we hardly hear anything of the engine. And they also didn't go for like, you know, a sound actuator that really, you know, screams all out in the way that comes into the cabin. Because again, this car is more about, let's say, um, you know, enjoying luxury, calmness and so on. Not necessarily sportiness, but still the all -wheel drive has a somewhat, you know, rear wheel drive focus as it's a rear wheel drive platform. Fuel economy, you can score 10 liters on long kilometers somewhat 23 mbg us 28 mbg uk you can do that but more realistic is then you know a little bit more in liters like towards 11 12 or a little bit less you know towards the 20 mbg us like mid 20 mbg uk that's a little more realistic figure for that and now driving up out of the peak with the s500 in the new generation sports mode steering feeling here is very natural but not too progressive but definitely more progressive than in the outgoing generation so you have to steer less and overall have a very good steering feeling and it doesn't have a dead zone area it's just not so progressive so it's a little bit more comfortable when running straight and not that sporty in situations like these but i mean it's a really heavy and long vehicle it's the long wheelbase version of the s class for europe and the standard wheelbase it's a long wheelbase in the US version. And considering, you know, the rear axle steering does a great job in making this car more agile, it's probably the best technology feature. Reduce the turning circle and gives you so much more agility, especially in at low speeds. The threshold where it changes is 60 kilometers an hour. Or yeah, that's probably like 30, 35 miles an hour. Um, so there it changes from opposite direction steering from the rear axle into parallel steering then for more stability at higher speeds. And here up the hill, very decent how the drive is and so comfortable even when I have some bumps. Definitely again not the sporty focus. We're looking forward to the AMG version, the true AMG version of the new S-Class. We're keeping you updated with that. And also now looking really forward to the comparison with the Panamera. So here we go, but the car feels really, really smooth. So yes, I talked a lot about that the user interface is worse than in the previous generation. I stick with that, but the driving has even more improved. So hardware-wise, chassis-wise, driving dynamics-wise, another step forward if you compare it then here, you know, the old with the new generation S-Class. the Porsche Panamera 4S executive long wheel base version. So equal amount of horsepower, but let's see how that one goes. Sports Plus mode, you already hear this is a different kind of mode. Exhaust and let's go.
up 200 kilometers an hour, 125 miles an hour, and that exhaust was really way louder. But also the wind noise is way louder here at the same speed. So definitely as for noise insulation, the S-Class is way ahead, but the Porsche feels sportier and more engaging. The suspension, although it's an air suspension here as well, way stiffer, way lower the vehicle, have more contact to the ground. This now feels like being on the racetrack, whereas the S-Class keeps up the comfort also while driving fast. This one's so much more engaging. It's completely different feeling. Now hard on the brakes. I could really imagine like driving it directly on the racetrack. That's the thing. This car is already or still racetrack proof, whereas the S-Class is really, you know, way distancing itself from that normal driving mode then the air suspension does a softer job actually but in general also you feel you're sitting lower in the vehicle the seats are way stiffer that's a minus point because i think the seat ergonomics are way worse here in the porsche so although this is supposed to be one of the most comfortable porsches i don't think they did a good job on the seat ergonomics the porsche cayenne is to me the most comfortable porsche you have a very good seating position there, upright, and also seat ergonomics is good. The Panamera, not really. Um, and here you can also see there's you know massive difference in ambient lighting. That's where the Escort is ahead. You see it you know more like in the, in the down area and so on. So especially at night, the S class is just more spectacular and fancy. The fancy factor definitely plays for the S class. The sportiness factor here plays for the Porsche. And steering, by the way, is a little bit more precise, crisper. But if you compare this one here with other Porsche model steerings, you still have to you know, steer more here in the Panamera. So they also set kind of an emphasis of more comfortably running straight, which is okay, again, for this, this model here. But that makes also the difference in steering not that huge as it would be between other Mercedes models and other Porsche models, for example. That's that's a very interesting point, definitely. But a major difference here, for example, also when going off the um, the, uh, the mountain of motorway here, and now we're here with quite a good amount of speed here in the corner, and where the S-Class felt really heavy, this one also doesn't feel light, but just when you have this precise steering, it feels more racy alike, and that's a good feeling. So you feel that you would be more in control of this vehicle here than with the S-Class. And once again, here I do have fun in the corner, sporty driving car. Rear axis steering is also built in this one. It doesn't go as far, you know, in the, in the degree like with the Mercedes S-Class, but still is notable. But with the S-Class, it's definitely more notable. So. Yeah, after high speed driving this one here, this really pumps some adrenaline, whereas the S-Class always holds the adrenaline low. That is so interesting, especially when driving the very, very same, you know, length, weight, horsepower, the very same track, I call it that way now. This is so interesting. I always wanted to do this comparison and people really think about these two vehicles here and We've seen it. There are so many different factors where the cars are comparable. So even more interesting that the driving is really where they differ the very most. Yes. Ah. Awesome. Accelerating out of the corner with the rear wheel biased all-wheel drive, rear axle steering. Yeah, this is one of the most fun luxury sedans, even here in the executive version. With the shorter wheelbase, it does feel more agile and is, of course, more racetrack ready. But still here with the long wheelbase, it's a lot of fun to drive. So if driving fun is the thing for you, then the Panamera is ahead. If more the comfort is something for you, then the S-Class is ahead. Here, the cruise control. We also have one with adaptive function, so keeping the distance to the car in front of us. And it's also with the active lane keeping assist. Let's see how that reacts very smoothly as well. The steering wheel is hardly moving at all, but still keeping me here in the lane. Please take over steering wheel comes 
earlier this morning than with the Mercedes S-Class. That's also interesting. Both score very well, result, very good results in the assistance systems, and they both also are equipped with blind spot monitors. Let's see if we can induce it right here. There's another Mercedes S class, actually, an older one. Yeah, there's the blind spot. No, it's an E class, E class, no. They really look the same from the front, <laughs> um, the older ones, at least. So, Sport Plus mode, then from 80 kilometers an hour, high speed. Well, this car behaves here at higher speed in the corner. How you know how settled it is on the road? That's truly amazing. Wow, what a high-speed performance! That's just marvelous. But again, you hear that's way louder in here. There's a question again: is what is more important to you? If anyone will drive these speeds here, oh, you see, you know how bumpy it gets relatively in comparison to the S-Class. So both air suspension but so completely different settings that the Porsche is more like bop, 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 bop in the sports mode and the S-Class when you drive over some waves with the S-Class it's more like it's so yeah this is so interesting to experience these differences here between these two vehicles and of course the last discipline for the day with the Porsche is driving up out of the field's peak and now driving up Autogefühl's Peak with the Panamera 4S. Here bring it out with the rear axle steering. Here we go. Very precise at the steering. And you see also some cars have the they have that thing that the steering snatches back, you know, automatically steers back by itself in the corners. Here it doesn't do that, it stays so calm. That's also what I love about the Panamera. Again, in comparison to other Porsche models, it could be a little bit more responsive and progressive, but still has this really nice and precise feeling. Here, going back to the normal mode, keeping it a little bit calmer while we pass these workers there, the side and these two houses. And then when we can go a little bit louder and more agile again, once again, back sports plus mode, this shift is everything, the whole characteristic of the car towards sportiness. And here we can really play out the differences this is where the Porsche is so much more agile than the S-Class. Definitely this becomes obvious. But again, you also lose the long-term comfort. So it's really a trade-off. The comparison between these two vehicles is a trade-off. But that's also what's making it so interesting because they have so much in common you know, on the paper, but then they're so different, especially in the driving part. This has been so interesting, but now the big question is, which one would you take home and which one would I take home? I'm starting to make up my mind, but I think the outcome won't be as expected. Tell me in the comments, have you already made up your mind? Which one is your favorite, Mercedes or a Porsche? They say Oda, yeah, some German <laughs> moments of me. <laughs> Why not? Then, which one would I take home? Exterior wise, I prefer the Porsche, it just has the more streamlined look, especially here in this Panamera generation. The second one, the first one didn't, not, didn't like that much, the second one even more. Interior wise, I think the Estas is just more sensual, especially at night with this great ambient lighting. That looks really amazing. However, user interface, I do prefer the Porsche. It's just easier to control. I think the Mercedes is just over-engineered on the interior. Driving wise, it's clearly the Porsche. It has more driving dynamics. Even when I go with the sports mode here in the S suspension, we'll see later on if it's different with the true AMG version of the S-Class but the Porsche Panamera is just more fun in driving. However, you lose comfort, but not necessarily because of the suspension. You could live with that, but the seating ergonomics is way better with the Mercedes S-Class. So, and my verdict for today is, if the seats would be more comfortable, I would take the Panamera. Is what I directly said shortly after being tempted by the Porsche Panamera driving experience in this sporty way. However, now, after 1,000 kilometers or 600 miles in the new S-Class and experiencing all the luxury features and especially driving it at night, here also coming up in a very special single video, then I really made up my mind and I just can say, 
S. Clausewitz.